Hello and in this video I will be covering how to interface with the EEPROM. First let's go over the hardware connections. I have my standard setup with LEDs connected to port B and an FTDI USB to serial converter to connect it to the RX and TX. Now let's go over to the datasheet. The EEPROM is controlled by four registers which is EECON1 and EECON2 which are the control registers. And then there's EE data and EE IDR. EE data holds the data that is either written to the EE prom or read from the EE prom. And EE IDR specifies which EE prom address is being written or read from. In the EE prom control register one, we have the flash program or data EE prom memory select bit. Since we are not working with the flash program, we are going to set the data access as the EEPROM. Then we have the flash program data memory or configuration select. We are going to set that to zero to get access to the flash program or data memory. Then bit 5, 4 and 3 are irrelevant. And then we have the flash program or data memory write enable bit. This just enables and disables writes to the EEPROM. Then we have the write control bit, which starts a write cycle to the EEPROM. And this is automatically cleared in hardware. So we are going to use a polling method to detect when the EEPROM has finished writing. And then we have the read control bit, which initiates a read uh, from the EEPROM. And this bit is also cleared in hardware. So we are also going to use a polling method to read from it. Now for writing data to the EEPROM, in EECON2 we need to follow the sequence of writing 55 hex to EECON and then writing AA hex to the EEPROM, otherwise we will not be able to write to the EEPROM. Now in this data sheet we have a nice little cheat sheet that shows us in assembler how to do a EEPROM read and write. This is not always the case, now let's get to coding. Okay, so the base setup of the code is to have a global variable of data. The UART detect if there was data received and a print buffer for the UART and then forward declaration of the interrupt functions. Then I set the uh, oscillator to 8 MHz. I set the entire B port as output. The entire B port is set low. I initiate the UART to have a board of 9600 and then I set up the interrupts. And then in my infinite loop, I just have a trigger um, for when data is received over the UART. In the high priority interrupt, the data received over the UART is passed on to the data variable. And the got data bool is set to true. And then nothing in the low priority interrupt. Okay, now our first function is going to be an EEPROM read. So we start, by having a function that returns an int 8. Also I'm gonna call this eeprom read. Okay, that function is taken. We'll just make it a capital letter. And we pass in a variable of uint 8. We'll call it addr for address. And our function starts with translating the assembler move literal to working instruction, which is our EEPROM address. And then we have a move working to file instruction to the EEADR address, uh, register. So in our code we have EEADR is equals to ADDR. Then we have a bit clear flag instruction on the EECON1 register on the EEPGD bit. So code we have EECON1 but EEPGD is equals to zero. Then that instruction is repeated for CFGS. So we copy paste, we change our member to CFGS is also equals to zero. And then we have a, a bit set flag function on EECON1 RD. So in code, we copy paste. We say the RD member is equals to 1 and while RD is equals to 1, we wait. And after that, then we return the value of EE data. 
Now the instruction here is move to file. So we move the contents of EE data to the working register. And that's what's needed for an EE prom read. Next, what we do is an EE prom write, which we declare a function of void. EE prom write. We pass it in uint 8, call it ADDR, and then again a uint 8, and call that data. Now the first instruction is move literal to working, and then move the working to a file, which is EADR. So we copy from the function from EEPOM read, EADR is equal to address. And then we have again a move literal to working, and that is moved to the EE data, which is going to be what we are going to write into the EE prom. So we say EE data is equals to data, which is now referred to as this variable. And then we do bit clear instruction on EECon1, EEPGA, ah, oh, PGD, bit clear flag instruction on EECon1, CFGS. And then bit set on econ on w ren, and then we disable the global interrupts. And this is done in C by copy pasting these three lines from the read function, and then changing this to rw to w ren member. And then we disable the global interrupts by setting in con bits gie high bit to zero. Then we have the mandatory writes to EECON2. So move 55 to EECON2. EECON2 is equals to 0x55. And then EECON2 is equals to 0xAA. Then we have a bit set flag, uh, which sets EECON R, uh, WR to 1. So we copy econ bits, paste it, and change the member to wr equals 1. And we say while wr is equals to 1, we wait. Then after the wait, re-enable the interrupts. And before we re-enable the interrupts, we disable the wren bit to disable writes. Now to demonstrate this code, I'm going to use running LEDs to set the amount of times a LED is flashed every time the pick is reset. So first what I'm going to do is add in two variables called run and LED flash. Now run is just a counter variable and LED flash is whatever we are going to input into the EEPROM via via the UART. Now next, just after the UART is initialized, we add in LED flash is equals to EEPROM read 0x00, which is the address. Then we do some nice printouts via the UART so we can see what's going on. We move the LED flash read above. Now this debug will just print out the character and then the decimal value of LED flash. And then we say LED flash is equals to LED flash minus character zero. This is to turn it into a normal decimal number. Then we add an if zero, well if not equals zero, execute the code. If you pass in zero you don't want any LEDs on. And if inside that, we add an if statement before the loop. We say LED flash is less than 10 and LED flash is greater or equals to zero. This will just stop the LED from going outside of parameters I don't want it to go. We say else. We add a debug print that just tells us if the number is too great for the running LED code. Then we also have negative one in our for loop. Otherwise you will get the LED always one more incremented that you want. Zero will be the first LED 
one will be the second lead. This just makes it so zero is no leads and one is the first lead and so on. Then we add a printout just before our infinite loop, prompting us to that we can save something to the EEPROM. Now we start with in our main loop. After we have received data via the UART, we say if data, which is the variable bound to the UART receive here, we just call the reset function. This will now do a soft reset on the pick. Every time we send the character the carriage return, this can be either 13 or backslash R. And we add another nice uh, printout prompting us to read a character into the EEPROM if we decided to overwrite the last character. Then we add an EEPROM write to 0x00 and then we pass in the data variable which one, which is the receive from the UART. And then we set got data bool to false. Now we program the pick. Now by default the values in the EEPROM are written as FF or 255 decimal. Now if we write a 0 to the UART, no LEDs will go on. If we write a 2, the second green LED will go on. If we write say 9, it will loop through the entire set and set the last LED. And then if we write an 8, it will go to the last LED. Now even if I do a manual reset, the reset button. You can see it retains its value and it also prints out on the UART every time. Now some bonus demonstrations is if you add a OR equals to the run LED code you can make a bar. So we write a 1 to it. We have a 1 and then 2 LEDs are on, 3 LEDs are on, 4 LEDs, 5 LEDs and so on. And that's a basic introduction to using the EEPROM on a PIC microcontroller. Any hardware that I've used will be linked down in the description. Any code that I've written will be linked to my Git. And a like, share, comment and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Have a nice day.